never mentioned. But in the New Testament, the word conscience is mentioned 32 times. And uh, the law was the thing that spoke in the Old Testament. Under the Old Covenant dispensation, it was the law that told people what to do and what not to do. Coming into the New Testament, all of a sudden, it's not the law, it's grace. Now, the law was given by Moses, grace came by Jesus Christ. And how did this grace come, and what does this grace have to do with our conscience? And we discussed in, in John chapter 8, when Jesus wrote in the sand, it, when the woman was caught in the act of adultery, uh, and the minute Jesus wrote in the sand, the Bible says, and they were convicted by their consciences. That's the first time the word conscience is mentioned in the Bible. So when Jesus wrote in the sand, the same finger of God that wrote the hard law on rock and stone, wrote this time in soft sand. And the Word of God says in Jeremiah 33, in Ezekiel 36 and 37, in Hebrews chapter 8, that I will take the heart of stone out of you, and I will put a heart of flesh in, and I will write my laws on your heart. And that word heart is conscience. So God is, uh, wrote His law on our conscience, so the conscience is now the faculty to discern between right and wrong, telling us what God is saying to us. So, well, how do we live? We live by the Word of Almighty God. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, So shall my word be that will proceed from my mouth. I want to just write that word down for us. We're going to build on that tonight. So shall my word be. God says His word that will proceed. So shall my word be that will proceed from my mouth. It will do what I've sent it for. It will not return unto me void. And it will accomplish its mission. So the word that proceed from the mouth of God. So there's a word. Uh, that is Isaiah 55, 11. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. The word of God that proceeds from His mouth will accomplish what it is sent for. It will do it and it will not return unto you void. So God is saying, if I said something, it will happen. You know, and we can think of Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said, and shall he not do it? Hath he not spoken, and it shall it not come to pass? And uh, the word of God is forever settled in the heavens. We know that the worlds were framed by the word of God, Hebrews 11, 3. We know by faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God. How do we know that? Genesis 1, God said, God said, God, and every time God said, things happened. So God's Word is a creative force and God's Word brings things into being. So how do we live? We live and exist by the Word of God. Everything is controlled by the Word of God. Hebrews, Hebrews 1 says, God who at sundry times and diverse manners spoke to the fathers by the prophets hath in these last days spoken to us by the Son whom He has appointed heir of all things. He is the brightness of His glory and the outflowing of the radiance of the greatness of our God who carries all things by the word of His power. So there's power in the word and the word has power. And this is a combined thing. So God says, so shall my word be. That will proceed from my mouth. Now, the Word of God comes to us by the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. So we've got an indwelling, an indwelling Holy Spirit. And Paul says in Romans chapter 9 verse 1, I think that was our first study, Paul says in Romans 9 ver verse 1, I, I, I speak the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit. So my conscience, the Holy Spirit, works with my conscience to hear what God is saying to me. So my conscience becomes the faculty, the, the place in my life where the Holy Spirit speaks to me through the Word of God. And if I listen to this Word that proceeds from the mouth of God Almighty, that which I hear will not return void, it will accomplish it, but then we will be successful. So if we can get that Word, listen to that word, obey that word, we will be successful. Okay? Now, uh, let's just think of, of the temptation of Jesus Christ in the wilderness. Okay? Uh, we pick that story up in Luke chapter 4. We get it in, Mar in Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. The Bible says, and Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Holy Spirit into the desert to be tempted of Satan or of the devil for 40 days. Right? And as he, as he was and hungered after 40 days, not during the 40 days, as he was hungered after 40 days, 
He finished his 40 day fast. Then only Satan came to tempt him. And the first thing he said, If thou be the Son of God, if thou be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Turn these stones into bread. If thou be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Now Jesus gave him a profound answer. And the answer comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. This is what Jesus said. Man shall not live. Man shall not live by bread. This is Satan's temptation. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth. That proceedeth. That proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I want you to get this into your mind like never before. What did Isaiah 55 11 says? So shall my word be that will proceed from my mouth. It will do what I send it for. It will accomplish it. It will not return unto my voice. What did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Quoting from Deuteronomy 8 verse 3. So we've got to get this revelation once and for all. So what is it that makes us alive unto God? What makes us that will be successful? What will cause us to have the word of God not returning unto you void? If we have a proceeding word coming from the mouth of Almighty God. So what will make us successful? What will cause the word of God to really prevail in our lives? To make, I mean, people stand on the word of God. People quote the word of God. Since the 1970s, when the revelation came of the word, people are quoting the word, quoting the word, standing on the word, saying, I'm more than a conqueror, I'm more than a conqueror, I can do all things, I can do all things, the Lord is my shepherd. And they quote the word, quote the word, quote the word, quote the word, and still... They're not healed. They quote the word, I'm healed by his stripes 36 times a day, and they're still not healed. They quote, uh, my God shall supply all my needs according to riches and glory by Christ Jesus. They quote it 47 times a day, and still their needs are not supplied. They quote, I'm more than a conqueror, and they defeat it all their lives. Why is it that that word doesn't work in their lives? It's not just a dead letter, because Jesus himself says, the letter killeth. Jesus himself said, the letter. Brother, and that's the letter of the word. The letter killeth. But it's the spirit. It's the spirit that gives life. It's the spirit that gives life. Now listen to this. The letter killeth. But I thought it's the word that'll, that we can live by. But the letter of a dead word killeth. It's the spirit that, that gives life. And this is John 6. John chapter 6 verse 63. Where Jesus said, the, But the word that I speak unto you, the word that I speak, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. So which word do you want? The one that's a dead letter or the one that is spirit and the one that is life? So if we can get this word, we will not only be alive, but we will see things accomplished in our lives. But people have got the Bible. And they stand on the Bible. But what about getting this Bible alive? What about getting the Bible alive without the Bible? I mean, when the Eastern Bloc was under communistic rule, they didn't have a Bible. And they had miracles, they had baptismal services without anybody organizing it. They had crusades of 3,000 people coming together in the bushes and nobody organized it. Everybody came there by divine appointment. How did they get it? They had a word from the Lord. They didn't add a dead letter. This Bible can be a dead letter. They read it in Muslim universities. They read the Bible in Muslim universities and it doesn't bring life to them. 
You see, so the letter can kill you. But it's the Spirit. So you've got to get the Spirit of God on the Word to make this Word alive. But how much more if we can have the living Word? Because John 1 verse 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And everything that was made was made by Him. And verse 14 says, This Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Now this Word is living in us. The day we accepted Christ, this Word started living in us. So now the Word is alive in us. What is the seed? Jesus Christ himself says, the seed is the word. And if we've got the seed in us, 1 John 3, we've got the seed in us. What is the seed? The word. So who's living in us? The word. Who's the word? Christ Jesus himself. So I can have a living relationship. I can hear the word of God. I can hear the voice of God. I've got to know my relationship with Jesus Christ, with the indwelling Holy Spirit. I've got to get a word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that word but for there it is, proceed. There it is, proceed. Deuteronomy 8, it's there. Matthew 4, it's there. Isaiah 55, it's there. That word means a follow-up word. A follow-up word. A follow-up word. It proceeds. It's coming, then it's coming, then it's coming, then it's coming, then it's coming. Let's call it by another name. Let's call it a fresh word. A fresh word. Didn't, didn't the psalm writer said in Psalm 92, 11, Thou hast anointed me with fresh oil. So we all need the fresh oil. Oh God, if I can just get a fresh anointing. If I can just get a fresh anointing. What about a fresh word? What about a fresh word? We all got a fresh anointing. And we come together and we have these meetings. And we anoint one another. And oh, just a fresh anointing. Touch me, oh God, a fresh anointing. What about a fresh word? You know, that's why, that's why people get stagnant in their Christian lives. That's why churches stagnate. That's why revivals stop. That's why we see people, and the, the only revelation they've got is about 200 years old, 500 years old, because they had a word from the Lord in 1500. Martin Luther had a word from God, man, and he took the 95 statements, and he nailed it to that church door in Wittenberg in Germany. But that word is very old. It's 500 years old. Since then, Wesley came along and he had a word from the Lord. But since then, the Anabaptists came along and they had a word from the Lord. Since then, the Pentecostal movement came along and they had a word from the Lord. Since then, but if you are just in Pentecost, you are just 100 years behind schedule. If you, if you with Martin Luther, you're just 500 years behind schedule. If you were the Wesleyans, you are 300 years behind schedule. You see? It was good for that time, but God's moving on. Yeah. Not just with fresh oil, with a fresh word. In the meantime, we've learned, we've learned how to speak in tongues. We've learned how to, to worship yeah. God. I mean, a couple of years ago, they didn't play musical instruments in church. A couple of years ago, they didn't worship in church. They had choirs singing songs in Latin that nobody understood. In the meantime, we started baptizing people. And since... Uh, the, the, the 1940s, we started praying for sick in churches. You see? So there's a fresh word. There's a fresh word. There's a f and we've got to stick with a fresh word from the Most High God. If we haven't got a fresh word, we will stagnate. So let's go to the book of First Kings and chapter 17. Elisha the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand. I want you to take note of this. When Elisha stood, into the, stood in the temple of Ahab before his throne, this was the statement. The Lord before whom I stand. So Elijah made a statement. I say, because I'm standing before God, because of the fact course I'm standing before God I've got a word from the Lord Amen. so that is a life of prayer intimacy with the most high God so Elijah didn't come and they said I've got a prophetic word he said the God before whom I stand has sent me a half Listen. There shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according 
to my word. There will not be rain except on my word. Verse 2 says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, So there's a preceding word. Okay? There's a preceding word. Listen, look this way and just catch this. Elijah stands before God. He's praying, worshipping. We don't know what he did, but he was busy with God. He got a word. Go to Ahab and say no rain. So he follows the word. Ahab, no rain, except I say so. As he turned around, the word of the Lord came a second time. So he had a proceeding word. You see, otherwise he would have gone home and sat there and said, well, I delivered the message. Now, no more rain. But he had a proceeding word. The word of the Lord came unto him again, saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. So, first word. First word. Go to Ahab. Second word, go to the brook Cherith. There the ravens will feed you. Man, they brought meat, they brought bread, and there Elijah was sitting here at a mighty Holy Ghost revival. I tell you, the bread's rolling in, finances are coming, the bread is coming, birds are bringing food. Verse 4, And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went. And did according unto the word of the Lord, for he, he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, a revival, hallelujah. And he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. There couldn't be rain, because he, pro he prophesied there will not be rain. So after a while, he had the word. He had a word, go to Ahab. He had a word, go to Cherith. One, three. And then the supplies dried up. The supplies dried up. Okay? No more. Supply, no more. Isn't it funny? So many times when we get a word from the Lord, we start off and we see the results. We see the ravens bringing in the meat, bringing in the... Man, everything works out. You start that new business because you had a word from the Lord. And people come and they buy your product. I mean, they fill the place to capacity. Man, you just got revival. And all of a sudden, the brook dries up. You know? And that is where we need to know what are we going to do the minute that the brook dries up. You see, and that way, that's where people miss it. We have the word. Start the business. We have the word. Go into the mission field. We've got the word. Start the ministry. We've got the word. Build the church. We've got the word. Marry this man. Marry this woman. And everything starts of wow, revival. The ravens come. Everything works out so smoothly. But then the brook dries up. Any, any, any witnesses? I mean, you're watching by TV. You know that. You know? You know that. And then people start murmuring grumbling and complaining and the Bible the living word of God says the whole Israel fell in the desert because they murmured because they murmured oh God no more water in the brook no more ravens no more food no more meat and you know and it goes worse and worse and then they get fed up and they get cross with God and they say but I thought it was a word you know everything worked together and now look at this look at the mess I'm in Elijah could have said that and many Christians miss their ministry, miss the anointing, miss the power, miss the glory. Because the brook dries up, brother, it's going to dry up. You don't have to order it. It'll dry up. It'll dry up. Sometime the brook will dry up. And what do you do then? Now, let's go on. Verse 7. And it came to pass after a while the brook dried up because there had been no rain. Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came again unto him. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord came another time. The word of the Lord came. And the word of the Lord said, Go to Zarephath. Okay? Go to Zarephath. For there I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. You see? If we've got a word and we're running with a word, and we don't get a preceding word, 
we will sit by a dried up brook, we will start murmuring, we will lose the glory, lose the power, and we will end up with religious activities and the power will be gone. That's why Paul says people will come and they will have a form of godliness denying the power thereof because they're living on a word of two and three and four hundred years old. But what about your personal life? What about your per When last did you hear from God? I don't mean reading Bible. When last did you add an inner witness? Do this. Go there. Don't do that. Don't do this. Remember, the conscience is awakened by the Lord Jesus Christ. So, so the word of the Lord came again and said, Go to Zarephath. And we know that this widow woman sustained Elijah with the, 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 the meal and the oil that didn't run dry. You know, she just had enough for her and her son. But when the word of God came, I mean, that supply never stopped, never stopped, never stopped, never stopped, never stopped, never stopped, never stopped. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The word came to Elijah and said, Go show yourself to Ahab, chapter 18, verse 1, and I will give rain. Listen to this. I mean, go show. The word came, the word came, supplies ran dry. Word came, word came. So, how many see that Elijah lived on a preceding word? No wonder he was such a successful prophet. No wonder that Israel still clings to him as a prophet. No wonder that everybody talked about Elijah that will come back. No wonder that the people thought Jesus was Elijah that came back into life again. I mean, this was a mighty prophet. He had a preceding word, 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 word. It was in the bushes when the word said, Go show thyself to Ahab. On the way, Obadiah met him and said, No, 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 no. If I come back with Ahab, the Spirit of the Lord would have taken you somewhere. He said, No, I will wait just here. And you know what happened? They went on to Mount Carmel, remember? And they had a duel with the prophets of Baal and, and Elijah. For the whole day, the prophets of Baal had their offering on their altars, prayed unto God. No fire came down from heaven. By the time of the evening sacrifice, Elijah rebuilt the altars of God. Got that prayer life in motion. He rebuilt the altars. He said, listen man, I want to show you how it's done. You've got to have an altar. You've got to have a prayer time. You've got to have a prayer place. You've got to have a place where you meet. You've got to have a place where you can stand before the living God. What are you doing? It's not good enough to pray while you drive your car. Do that. It's not good enough to pray while you wash the dishes. Do that. But you've got to have a time where you rebuild the altars, where you've got a life of prayer, where you stand before the Most High God. Why? To get a word. So here's Elijah on Carmel by the time of the evening sacrifice, rebuild the temple and listen to his prayer. Hear me, O God. You can check it up in First Kings chapter 18. Hear me, O God, so that these people can know that I have done all these things on thy word. That the people can know that everything I've done is because of a preceding word, a word, a word. I don't just do things, I do things because I got a word from the Lord. And the Bible says, fire came, consumed the altar, consumed the bull, consumed everything. So, Elijah just killed the 400 prophets of Baal, the 400 prophets of Assyria, and I mean, this is a mighty man of God. No? So, so here's Elijah, because of the word of the Lord, look at what he has accomplished. Then, listen to point number six. Point number six. All of a sudden, he heard a rumor. Through the grapevine, a gossiping tongue, a slandering person, a jealous preacher, somebody that was antagonistic against him, somebody that didn't like him, somebody that wanted to see him dead, somebody that came and just through the grapevine just brought one little word and said, hey man, Jezebel's going to kill you. Jezebel. Jezebel is going to kill you. You know what? I mean, this man has just killed 900 priests. Chopped their heads off prayed fire down from heaven, prayed rain down from heaven. Now he's running because of bad news. Because 
He doesn't listen to the proceeding word. All of a sudden, he listens to the word of the crowd. All of a sudden, his ears are turned towards what man thinks, what man says, what man's got in mind. I mean, Elisha wouldn't have thought of Jezebel if he still stood before God. But after some of our greatest victories, comes our greatest challenges. You know, got this great power, this great breakthrough, and then somebody comes and just tells you one bad news. And you listen because you don't stay in your time of prayer. So what happened? He ran away from Jezebel. Now, and what happened after he ran away from Jezebel? He started murmuring. He started murmuring. He started murmuring. How do I know that? He said, oh God, I'm the only one that's alive. Kill me, God. Take me away, God. I'm the only one. And he started moaning. God, I've labored for you. I've prophesied. I've worked so hard. Please take me away now. Moan, 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 moan. Why do you moan? Because you know about Jezebel. That's the only way you will murmur. If you've got a word from the Lord, you cannot murmur. We said it right in the offset of this meeting. You know, the children of Israel murmured and they died in the wilderness. Here starts Elijah and he starts murmuring. You know? Why? Because he hasn't got another proceeding word. If you've got, he didn't murmur here. He didn't murmur there. He didn't murmur there. He didn't murmur there. He didn't murmur when the supplies ran up. He didn't rye when the... Uh, murmur when there was a drought but he started murmuring when he heard a little woman wants to kill him why because he wasn't in the presence of God anymore how do I know that first Kings chapter 19 verse 11 God said go stand upon the mountain before the Lord look this way look this way the very first sentence in first Kings chapter 19 verse 11 when, the, when God saw Elijah murmuring, running away because he heard bad news, and he hadn't got a preceding word, but now he's got a word from the crowd. He's got a word from the people. Now it's not God's word leading him, it's a man's word that's leading him. So that caused him to murmur. That caused him to feel sorry for himself. So he's got this pity party. Why? Because we listen to the noise of people. So here sits Elijah in the cave, and here comes God. And he said, Elijah, come and stand before God. Is it in your Bible? Yes. Come and stand before God. Yeah. Why? That's where you get the preceding word. Yeah. Elijah, come and stand before God. And then wind came, fire came, earthquake came. Elijah thought, this is God, this is God. But it was just the glory passing by. The glory passing by according to Exodus 24 and 33. The glory was passing by. And Elijah was beholding this mighty scene. How the mountains broke up before God coming because he rides in clouds of glory. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, listen to this, listen to this. Verse 13. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his man. No, verse 12. And after the earthquake of fire... But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, went out, stood in the entering of the cave, and behold, there came a voice unto him, saying, An another time, What doest thou here, Elijah? And I want to tell you, if you started listening to people, and you're out of the presence of God, and all of a sudden, God draws you with his grace and his mercy to come stand before him again the first thing that God will say to you is what are you doing here what are you doing in a place of throwing a pretty party what are you doing in a place of murmuring what are you doing in a place of complaining and groaning it means you haven't got a word from God it means you forgot how God led you up to there Ibn Ayyazar up to here God has led us and now you're listening to the people. What is the people saying? What does the people say about me? What do they say about my business? What do they say about my ministry? And because of that, you murmur. And God will say to you, don't you want to just come stand before me? And the very th first thing will be, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be in this place where you are now of pity parties and, and murmurings and complaints and going, get up and go do what you're supposed to do. Listen. And God said, God said, verse 15, Go, return on thy way. Did you see that? Don't go on from here. Go, return on thy way. Why? Because this is where he last heard the word of God when he, when he prayed the fire and the rain down. 
Okay? Now he's on the mountain. God says, go back to where you last had the word. Go back on your way. And then, when you pick it up that you can stand before me and you realize where you last heard my word, then go and anoint a new king. Go and anoint a new prophet. Go and do this. And all of a sudden, Elijah had his twinkle back in his eyes. He had the sparkling back in his voice. All of a sudden, he had the spring back in his step. And here goes Elijah. And you never hear of Jezebel again. So we hear how the dogs licked up her blood in the streets. So God got rid of Jezebel. God will work with everybody that's against you if you're living in a proceeding world. If you're not living in a proceeding world, the Jezebels will kill you. They will haunt you. They will torment you. They will cause you to be a murmuring, complaining, grumbling person filled with self-pity. But the minute you get a proceeding word, I tell you, God will work with your enemies and you will be a victorious, successful, prosperous person. Get a proceeding word. Stand in the presence of God. Rebuild the altars. Get a fresh word. That's how you're going to live. Amen.